basis. Already no questions, huh? I doubt that. Yep, how you doing, Brian? What was the, the process like for you going from the analyst to getting this full time, and then what's your excitement level um, getting back into the coordinator role? Yeah, so last year um, in, the, in the summer, in fact, I was walking my daughter down the aisle. It was uh, her wedding day, and I got a call from Coach Prime to come out. He wanted just somebody to come out and put some pro eyes on things, uh, be around Shador. You know, it was had to be kind of an unofficial deal. Um, as an analyst, you know, you really don't have a defined role. You're just helping with the coaches and whatnot. And so that's where it started. And then when I got here, as time went on, we all know kind of what happened. Um, but and then things happen for reasons, you know, and then um, just tried to take over at the end. You know, unfortunately, at the end, you know, of the four games that I was calling, really, Shador was only really healthy for one of them, uh, unfortunately. You know, the Oregon State game, he kind of came in, banged up. You know, we had tried to change gears then. He was kind of banged up all week, you know, and he struggled through it. Um, the next game against Arizona, did a, you know, did a good job. We, you know, we were in a position to kick a field goal for the win. Um, I think we scored 31, you know. The next week, we kind of got worked when we went to Washington State. Well, he was hurt again, so he was in and out of the lineup. We played three quarterbacks. It was a tough scenario, but they battled through it. And then the last week against Utah, you know, we really tried to slow it down and give Ryan Staub the best opportunity to uh, play a good game, which I thought he did. Um, so, you know, we we're kind of working the throttle and trying to get through it and win games. And unfortunately, we didn't win the games. But, um, you know, it was, uh, I guess, every experience in life is something you can learn from, you know. And, uh, so then we move on, and now we're able to kind of set some stakes in the ground and do some things that we need to do better to play winning football. You know, we, winning football is what you need to do, and it obviously starts by being able to run the ball and protect the passer. You know, we obviously know how dynamic Shador can be. Um, you know, it was a credit to our guys this offseason. They went out and got us some quality big people that will help us be able to do that so we can play winning football. You know, uh, thought early in the year, you know, we did some really good things. But then when we had to really drop our anchor and block guys and, you know, run the ball, pass the ball, and do more things, that's kind of where we struggled. And then it just kind of vibrates through your team. So. Hey, Coach, Jake Schwann, uh, Last season, Dylan Edwards really exploded off the scene, and you guys, he struggled to kind of get back to that production. Um, how do you project his role this this year? Any changes to what you expect out of him? No, we're going to try to use his, you know, his talents and his strengths. Obviously, he can be very dynamic with the ball in his hands. You know, he had a lot of production early on, and then as the season wore on, you know, I think it's fair to say um, he got kind of banged up too. I don't think there's the same injury criteria, so we can talk about that stuff. Unlike the other league, right? Um, but he was pretty banged up, and he fought through it. And uh, so we're going to try to use his strengths uh, this year and, and do it from day one. So practice plays here in training that maybe you won't see that we're going to plan to use, you know, whether it's style of run, running, um, running them to the perimeter, uh, catching passes, try to utilize his strengths and practice them early and just not try to crank up plays like midweek for him. Um, so that's sort of what we do. Um, and it's really, I think that's kind of the NFL thing. Um, you know, you're always trying to um, maximize the strengths of the players you have first. Like we talked to the quarterbacks about the four pillars of decision making. It starts with matchup, and then it's space, numbers, and leverage. You know, but you always got to be aware of, okay, is Travis in the game? Uh, is Dylan in the game? And utilize all your players that way, which is a little bit different than – um, just kind of running plays, you know, and so we're going to try to try to do that, um, do that well. Try to. Coach Masters, 104.3 The Fan for the season. And to follow up on Brian's question, throughout the transition of last year, I imagine spending 25 years in the NFL and then coming back to college, that's quite the transition. Did you feel maybe re-energized by the fact that you were around maybe some younger guys and had a chance to look at the game a different way? 
Hundred percent. I, I think that I was hoping to be able to get to that, and you kind of answered it for me. Yeah, I do. I do feel re-energized by the the younger player, and they're all ears. And I can't tell you how many meals I've had where you know they're tell me about Michael Vick, tell me about Sam Bradford. You know what was, uh, you know what was Case Keenum like? You know, tell me about a young Drew Lock. You know, it, it really. You know, they want they want perspective, and I think. Uh, the end game for some of these guys is going to be pro football, so they're always looking for the perspective. Um, you know, how did Donovan McNabb do this, or you know, what would have you know what would have happened here? Tell me about T.O. You know, all the the guys that you've been around, and you know that's kind of a neat piece. You know, if if I were ever a boss at this level, I think it's really important whatever their role is, you should really bring in guys with pro experience to help give these young men that perspective, and so that's been fun, but. It's a different game than the pro game. You know, the pro game, like we're in 10 personnel a lot. Well, most pro rosters, you can't get into 10 because your roster doesn't, you know, you need the tight ends and so you're in 11, 12, and 13. So it's a different game. For the first week or so, I thought when you got one foot down, it was out still. I mean, so there's things you got to learn. Um, you know, you're on the hash mark, which is it's a big field here. We're in pro ball, you're always in the middle. So there's a lot of field boundary configuration. So all that part's fun. Uh, and it's a much more wide open game. So that's why, in my opinion, there's more numbers in college. You know, you see games where there's 600 yards of offense, you know, in some of the stuff that you'll never see, you know, in the NFL because it's, and a lot of it's driven by the roster, you know, in the NFL, you had to have three or four tight ends, a couple of backs, only a handful of receivers instead of a whole room full of them. And so it's a different, it's a different game. The other thing, sorry, real quick, I was going to ask you about scheme transition and how you feel like now that you have a chance to put your system in place, mm -hmm. what the difference in the offense might look like compared to last year. Well, I, like I said, I think we need to protect the passer and run the ball much better than we did last year. And so you got to practice those things, you know. But we still have to utilize the strengths of a dynamic quarterback and throw the ball. Um, so it's going to be fun, you know. Every place I've been, I've tried to spread the ball around. You know, and make sure everybody was getting their touches, um, whether it be tight ends. Like last year, we really didn't even have tight ends. You know, Michael Harrison did a great job. I think he was on in the, uh, you know, he was in the program as a tight end, but he really had the skill set of a wideout. So that makes it different too. Even when you're in 11, you're probably playing at like 10. So that's why we've added bodies and pieces and, and young men that have the skill set to be able to do more of those things. Yeah, no problem. Shooter regarding the projected the high draft pick next year. Um, what does he have as far as criticism he had last year? What does he have to do to take the next step? Is there how do you get him to take that next step? What does he have to do? Well, I think he's just, you know, like any young player, just continue to improve. The things that he's really, really good at though, uh, he's got an uncanny ability to throw the ball accurately. He sees things extremely well. Um, he's got a really good feel for situations. You know, he's played a lot of football. He's a young man, but he's played a lot of football. He's probably been a starter everywhere he's played, starting with his, with his dad in, in the lower levels. And, but he has a really good feel for it. You know, that, that three-dimensional natural feel for what's open, what's not, where to put the ball. You know, we all know when we see it that it's not good. So with him, when you see it, it's really good. And so that's why he's fun to work with. Um, he has a really good feel for... Um, all those things that you need to be able to do as a quarterback. And so we just got to improve on all those things. Talk to Troy Ray from the Denver Post. What is it like working for Coach uh, Prime? And how is that, you know, how is that process? Do you have autonomy or is it a collaborative thing regarding the offense? And, and did you have a prior relationship with him other than, you know, maybe you obviously you coached against him or yeah. in the NFL? Yeah, so obviously I was a young coach when he was still in the league. Um, we're, we're about the same age, so we're, in some ways, we're kind of rejuvenating young by the, the environment we're in, but we've, we've got experience. Um, I think that's good. Um, you know, I did have a relationship with him, obviously, you know, playing against him as a player, and then Mike Zimmer and I, when I worked for Zim, uh, those years in Minnesota, um, they had a relationship, so that helped kind of connect the dots there. And... It's been good, you know. I think uh, we, we're able to communicate uh, really, really well. Um, he is a head coach. He does an amazing job of communicating his mission 
and his vision to the players. Uh, and he's really, he's really fun to work for because of that. Um, in a lot of ways, he's old school. So all the things that we learned, you know, no tank tops in the meal room and always got something on your feet. Some of the old school things that we, you know, no hats in the meeting, all the stuff. Uh, all some of the old school stuff that we kind of taught and he was obviously taught. Um, it comes through on the players and I think it's really good. So for me, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I feel young again because of that. And he really is fun to work for. And I'm here for him. I'm here for his son. I'm here to help in any way possible to help this program have success because I do believe in his mission. Yeah, no, Sean's had great success the places he's been. Um, you know, I think some of the things that uh, some of the things that we did well, um, you know, we'll try to, you know, incorporate and keep going with. But then there's obviously other things that we're going to do that's going to be way different. So I think because you have returning players, and I've kind of always, you know, you know, I don't mind what we call it. If it's curl flat, there's five ways to call it. So let's call it. And then some of the, you know, some of the stakes that are in the ground from last year, you know, to, you know, we called it an apple last year. This year it's an orange. You know, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go with that a little bit because then for the guys that are here, you know, they don't get that. Oh man, it's we're starting over. You know, there's. I think it's, I think it's good when you take over something and you have new players. Um, that if there's something they can hang their hat on. And so what basically what we're going to do is go back and look at the things that we did well last year that we continue to like and then add things to it that will help us be even better. That's, and, and really, believe it or not, they're doing the same thing in the Kansas City Chiefs building. That's what we do as coaches, you know. Um, places I've been, you know, if you had a play that you loved that didn't work real well, you'd say, let's put that one on the shelf, you know. Then you move on to something else. Then you look at trends, right? Are things trending in, in college or pro football that are good? And then you try to make it your own and make it better. You know, the first year of football, everybody invented everything, and we've been copying it all since. And I think that's pretty much what it's all about. Thank you, Coach. That it? Yes, sir. You didn't tell me. That was quick. Was, oh, yeah, play 23. So we were in their script, and, and he came in, and he said, you know, Play 23, I think, went for a touchdown today. So that was his play. <laughs> Dumbo right, Liz went for a touchdown. So anyways, so if you guys got any ideas, and I'm sure you got a lot of great ideas, uh, just get them to us. We'll run it. All right? All right, guys. Thank you.